I'm Ryan Lightfoot Brown of Fund Calibre. We're joined today by Bertie Thompson, manager of the Brown Advisory Global Leaders Fund. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, your process has sort of four stages. There's the valuation um, and the return on capital, sort of the numbers side of things. But also you've got the product has to be good, the product or service, and the management team as well. Um, I was wondering if we could sort of go through um, each of those and sort of look at the funds in the process. Sure, absolutely. So any investment in global leaders has to satisfy each one of our core uh, key tests, which are essentially the, the test that any potential investment needs to, needs to pass through. The first is uh, really the franchise quality. We're looking for companies that do something very special for their customer, and they need to also have their business surrounded by what we call economic moats. These are essentially uh, forces that will insulate the business from competition. Uh, the second test is what we call quantitative metrics, and really this is that we have to see the quality characteristics of these companies in the numbers, which as you mentioned is return on capital, and it's also free cash flow, because free cash here for us is the core conception of value. The third of the four tests um, is management quality, and we're really looking for managers that we feel um, have an investor mindset. This is incredibly rare amongst CEOs and CFOs who come up through organizations. They have to think like investors when they allocate balance sheet and cash flow. And lastly, the last of the four tests is valuation. Uh, we have to buy these great companies when they're undervalued, because at the end of the day, this isn't just an academic exercise, we're here to make money uh, for our clients. I'm just going back to the first of these, like identifying these companies. The product or serving service you're looking for um, is meant to deliver a superior client outcome, as you say in your, um, in your literature. Um, can you explain what you mean by that, and perhaps maybe put a couple of examples on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it always kind of mystifies us how uh, little attention uh, investors give to, to the customer. Really, value for any company starts with the customer. And you could see in any financial statement, whether you're looking at a profit and loss account, cash flow statement, or balance sheet. And to be very trite about it, you know, if you don't have a customer, you don't have a business. So what we're looking for, as we, we, we say, is companies that do something special for the customer. That means that the customer comes back time and time again to consume those products. Uh, you know, a good example um, of this is the relationship that both of the payment networks that we invest in, Visa and MasterCard, um, have with the issuing banks that they work for um, and also with the merchants around the world. You take a company like Visa, the 61 million merchant locations in the world, 3.4 billion Visa cards out there, and they can instantaneously guarantee uh, your payment uh, with your bank uh, in a split second. You know, that is a very, very safe and secure network. It benefits the ecosystems of customers that bank and use Visa. It also benefits the financial institutions that issue the cards. And lastly, it also benefits the merchants because they know they're going to get paid when you go into a shop and use your Visa card. Um, and one of the other stages, I think it's the third stage, was management quality. Um, can you perhaps talk us through that as well? Because um, you look at uh, the history of the ethics and the long-term vision of these companies um, and maybe put a bit of um, colour on the example you used before, like Visa, with that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, the thing about uh, management quality, you know, it's, it's not the most unique uh, characteristics that we look for. I doubt that you meet many investment managers who say that they really target uh, bad quality managers um, when they look for an investment. But when we look at management quality, we kind of define it differently. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we're really looking for companies that have a management team that have an investor mindset. So they think like investors. So when they deploy balance sheet and capital, they're thinking very much about the long-term uh, value generating um, 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 aspects of that deployment of balance sheet uh, and capital. And I think you know, Visa has that in spades. Not only do they have a great network around the world, and so does MasterCard, the company is investing in next generation technology, something such as um, you know, Visa, Correct, Visa Connect would be uh, a great example of that, where essentially they are putting money behind next generation business to business technology uh, that will benefit the business and will benefit the customers in a totally different sector uh, for many years to come. And while these are great companies with good management teams, um, one of the most important things, which I think you touched on at the beginning, is the valuation of these companies. Um, what's sort of your unique ability in valuing these companies? Yeah, I mean, I think valuation can be approached many different ways. I mean, the core way that we analyze any company is using cash flow. 
Um, you know, at the end of the day, cash is what comes out of a business. We often uh, a joke on the team that you, you can't pay dividends with earnings, you can't pay down debt with earnings, you can't buy other companies with earnings. Uh, we value every company with cash flow because you can do all those things with free cash flow. And for us, it is the core conception of value. We have a standard cash flow analysis framework that we use. We use a, a cost of capital that we think is uh, quite conservative and our valuation discipline takes us to places uh, where certain other quality focus managers don't go to and also at the same time it keeps us out of areas that many quality other focus managers aggressively go to. So a good example would be we're underweight healthcare at the moment, not that we don't like the quality characteristics of a number of med tech companies out there, it's just that we, when we run a cash flow analysis we think that these assets are very, very expensive on a three cycle basis and we choose not to participate because as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're really here to make money for our clients rather than just making ourselves feel good about buying great businesses. And one uh, really interesting, well, quite intriguing part of your process is you use a third party business um, to go and analyze your team's decision making or real, make sure you're not making any behavioral finance errors. Uh, could you perhaps talk about um, how you use this, an example of um, how it has improved your process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we really believe that human beings are uniquely disadvantaged for this activity. Uh, you know, in many ways, we're doing a, a 400 uh, year old job with a 2 million year old brain. You know, many of our behaviours are really being um, uh, uh, fashioned through evolution, which were very helpful when we were living in caves or in the savanna, but they're not very helpful when you're allocating uh, capital. Uh, you know, one of the best examples of this is that we are hardwired to survive and we really avoid pain at all costs. And investment, this means that um, we don't like dealing with losers, essentially. We don't like facing up to losers because losers are a source of pain, uh, which means that it's very, very easy for a small loser to end up becoming a huge loser and destroy a lot of value. So we work with some third-party consultants to help us become better capital allocators and try and iron out some of these behavioral issues and in the, the loser example, which specifically is around a behavioral bias called loss aversion, we have a drawdown rule where we automatically review an investment that has underperformed by 20% since we bought it or under, by 20% on a rolling 12 month basis. And at the end of that re underwriting review, we're doing one of two things we're either buying more or we're selling, because to do nothing is essentially loss aversion. And when you look at the data, more often than not, when we've bought on the back of the drawdown review, that has added value. And more importantly, when we've sold on the back of the drawdown review, that has preserved our client's capital. So as we continue to work with these consultants, we expect to bring in more and more rules that help us become better capital allocators and limit the damaging impact of um, human behavior on our client's capital. Okay, and moving on to sort of the bigger picture, we've seen a bit of a trend against globalization with sort of the trade wars and things like that. Um, do you worry that the outlook for your global leaders companies um, has been diminished and that they can stay global leaders in the future? Yes, we do. I mean, we are incredibly paranoid um, about the competitive position that our companies have in their marketplace and the number of economic moats they ran have the business model, because essentially this is what is going to insulate these businesses from competitive forces, which is actually one of the, the major risks that we face uh, with our investment approach, essentially that a competitor will enter the marketplace in time, disrupt the relationship that the company has with its customer. So we are very, very paranoid about that. We're also looking for companies that we feel are good corporate citizens. They do something special for their customer, but also they engage uh, with local regulatory bodies, they engage with local governments, and are actually doing good in the world. So when we look at the companies that we invest in, yes, trade wars might come and go, but we do feel that the companies that we invest in have a very, very attractive long-term uh, future ahead of them. Well, Bertie, that's been really interesting. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And for more information on the Brown Advisory Global Leaders Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com.